today on Karamo. Her run in her mouth. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. She's at odds with her granddaughter. I'm 17. She treat me like I'm 10. You cannot talk back to me. A revelation that will change everything. I had a problem with that. So if she threw with me, I'm through with her. Is about to come out. Plus, he's convinced his boyfriend is sleeping with his best friend. When it comes to your boyfriend and your best friend, it's two phones unlocked, 216,417 interactions, and Please. they were all romantic in nature. Welcome to the show, friends. My guest today was inspired to write into the show after watching an episode of me helping another family unlock their truth. Cherie has custody of her teenage granddaughter and says she's disrespectful and spinning out of control. And she's tired of the eye rolling, the yelling, and physically fighting with her 17-year-old granddaughter, Zanaya. Their arguments have gotten so heated that Cherie has called the police. Everyone, please welcome Cherie to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being here. May I have a hug? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, I got to know, when did things start to change? When did you and your granddaughter start to butt heads? About three years ago. Three years? When she was in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. um, she started dating. Yeah. She going to tell me she's dating. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm dating. That's the day she started becoming grown. Mm. Thinking she can say what she want to say to me, do what she want to do, and totally disrespectful ways. So how is she being disrespectful to you? Zanaya, tell me what she's going to do. Uh -huh. That's totally disrespectful. Mm. You don't tell me what you're going to do. I took the initiative to raise four grandchildren out of respect of my daughter. You took the kids in because your daughter unfortunately She's passed? She's passed away. Yes. I've raised each one of these children from birth. Mm. Although their mother was there, I had them because she wanted to go run the street. Got it. So I sacrificed my whole life. Yeah. So what happened in October when the police was called? I went to pick her up from school and we had this conversation. It was me and her brother in the car. And Zanaya said something to the fact about her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I said, Zanaya, you need to calm down. We, we wasn't even supposed to be on that conversation. She was going off. And I slept at her. I slept at her, beat her up, made her get out of my car, so and called did, the police did, on her how ass. How did it escalate to that part of the fighting? Her running her mouth. Yeah. She got a mouth that <laughs> you kill her. Uh -huh. it, her mouth is ridiculous. Yeah. And I don't have to stand for that. Why did you tell Zanea um, you would shoot her in the foot and keep her in the house? Because that's, I, that's I'm, I can be real and I understand the disrespect, but that's violent language. She'll take you there. Okay. She would take you there. I'm, 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 I'm up here with Zanaya. Yeah. And I did say, i shoot her ass in the toe. Yeah. I will. I'm tired. I ain't going to kill her. I love her. I ain't going to hurt her. But she need to, she need to listen. She, these young folk, these day, I don't know what the hell wrong with them. Let me tell you something. This, is, this must be an old black family thing because I swear to God, my, I had a family, I'm not going to say, I almost said who it was. You used to say to me, if you get out of line, I'm going to shoot you in the foot so that every time you take a step, you remember not to get out of line. And I used to look at them when I'm 14, I'd be like, you going to shoot me in the foot. <laughs> well, I, used to, and hear it again. I used to think that was only me. And to hear it again now? Yes. <laughs> it ain't went nowhere. It okay, it ain't went nowhere. No, no. Wow. Because I'm old school. Yeah. I'm old school. And, and, and that's the best way to be. So you talked to me about her mother who died in a car accident in 2012. I want to know what was your relationship like with her? It, 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 it wasn't good. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't do nothing for her because she was running the street. I had to take care of her damn children. Is that why you're so protective of um, Zanaya? I'm protective of each and every last one of them. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, her mother, I was trying to be protective over her, but she was being hard-headed and went out there and passed away because I told her not to do something, mm -hmm. not to go somewhere, even my husband. Yeah. So. You know, I, I got to tell you, I know that there's been some time since 2012, but I know you're still grieving because I heard the language. You kept referring to your daughter as her mother. 
Yeah. Which there's a there's a, a mental and emotional block that you have yeah. there. Have you ever spent time to think about that and to, no. to go with that? No. I haven't had time. I understand. I've I raised these children from three, four, five, six, all the way up to now. Listen, I, I haven't had the... time to take care of myself. And that. I'm tired now. Yeah. I'm taking initiative to take care of myself. I do get it. It's, yeah. I do get it. Well, listen, I'm talking to Cherie, who is afraid of losing her granddaughter like she lost her own daughter. I think it's time that we hear from Zanaya. Everyone, please welcome young Zanaya to the show. <laughs> Zanaya, can I have a hug? Mm -hmm. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good, good, good. You smell lovely. <laughs> Thank you. So I got to ask you a question, and I want you to be honest, because I can already tell you're a smart girl. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're disrespectful to your grandmother? I don't think I'm disrespectful to her. I mean, I asked her, like, what's her definition of disrespect or how I'm being disrespectful to her? Mm -hmm. But she can't tell me why. So I'm going to ask you from your own, because, again, I want to go from you. What do you think the definition of disrespect is? You know, calling you out your name type and um, just, like, extreme ruthless <laughs> behavior. Calling out your name and extreme rudeness. I know what she's talking about because I calls her a bitch because she be acting like a bitch. I'm 17. She treat me like I'm 10. Is there any way this relationship can be healed? You cannot talk back to me. A revelation that will change everything. I had a problem with that. So if she threw with me, I'm through with her. Is about to come out. took the kids in because your daughter unfortunately She's passed. She's passed away. Yes. I sacrificed my whole life. When did you and your granddaughter start to butt heads? Sanaya, tell me what she's going to do. That's totally disrespectful. So what happened in October when the police was called? Her running her mouth, and I slept the out of her. What do you think the definition of disrespect is? You know, calling you out your name, extreme ruthless <laughs> behavior. I know what she's talking about, because I called her a because she be acting like a uh -huh. Have you ever called your grandmother out of her name or was extremely rude? No, I ain't never called her out her name. She can't do that. Yes, okay. But have you ever been extremely rude? I mean, in her terms, I guess I have, but like to me, I haven't. Okay, and tell me why, because I really want to hear your side. I mean, because like I try to explain my side to her, but to her, she don't care about my feelings. It always turns into how she feel about certain stuff, how she feel about how I feel but she never get a chance to hear me out for nothing. Yeah, yeah. Why should I have to listen to you? Because you have I to have listen feelings to too. me. I know, you have li I know you have feelings, but I'm the adult, and I'm not gonna tell you nothing wrong, honey. You, you, you cannot... You expect me to sit there, listen to you talk, and that's it, that's done. No, I'll give you your chance to talk. And when I talk, you over talk me and change it to how you feel. Okay. Do you feel All like right. that ever happens? No. Okay. No. Yeah. I give her a chance to talk. She don't never give me a damn chance to talk. That's why I slept out of her when we was in the damn car. Okay. Because she kept running her mouth. In the car, I told you, I, you kept referring to me as my mom and my dad. I told you, stop doing that because I'm not them. I wasn't here when they was around. I'm not them. No, no you're not. You can't refer to me as them. And I tell you all the, all the time, be better than your mom and daddy. Don't be like them. So that's a lie. So you, your, your grandmother is overprotective from her own words. She knows that. How does that, how does that affect you? OK, so I'm 17, as we all know. Duh. But to, to her, she treat me like I'm 10. Okay. Like, I'm young. Like, she told me, put a tracker on me. I had a tracker on me all the time. And it's like, even with a tracker on, without a tracker on, she want me to tell her, Step by step, what I'm doing. It's only for your doing. safety. No, even no. When I'm you out got with my it friends, wrong. You got it wrong. Even when you I'm got... out with my friends, I can tell I'm going no. to the mall. She got it what wrong. time you gonna be back home? I come in your house at a respectful time. I don't come in 12, 11. I don't come in none of that. I be there at 9 o'clock or 10. Is that true? She always comes at a respectful time? No. You told my producers that you said that you, you're not going to end up like your mother and grandmother. What do you mean by yes, that? Yes, because grandma, she will always tell me, I grew up like this. When I grew up, I had to do this and I had to do that. I'm not like you. I don't, I'm not, my, how I grew up is not how you grew up. So you tell me life is a circle. I'm gonna think outside that circle. I'm gonna think, you keep holding me in, it's gonna make me wanna go out. 
and do something I crazy. I understand I'm not, what she's saying. Again, I'm not that type of person. She'll, she'll probably be like, oh, you go out here and go wild with these boys. I am not that type of person. Yeah. I don't let no boy influence me. I influence myself. Yes. Okay. That's good. I, I want to know more about you. How are you, how are you in school? Um, how are you? Are you a good student? Yes, I have made principal lists. I, I reason I asked that is because I asked my producers to ask you for re your report card. You are getting a 3.1. That's great. You're great. Yes. You're phenomenal. Yes. I also heard you're taking aerospace science. Yes, business... I'm in ROTC. Yeah, you're in business technology. You're in multicultural literature. Your GPA is a 3.1. And all your teachers recommended you as like one of the best students in the school. Yes. They, they, they tell me that. They tell me that. <laughs> yes, but I as soon as she get home yes, with I'm... me, here we go. Yeah. The damn mouth. Yeah. It don't be the mouth. You I can't... appreciate all of that. I appreciate all of that. You can't take how I feel. You, you put it in, you view it something totally different in your head, and that was disrespectful. I've asked you, how is it disrespectful? You can't even tell me. So until you can tell me, I can't fix nothing. Zanaya, you cannot talk back to me. That's the number one thing. You cannot talk back to me. Me explaining how I feel is talking back to you. No. When I walk away from Zanaya, there you go. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I, I, so be it, I got a problem with that. I that have, and I will I have not let have her, that around me. Literally, she will try to argue with me. Yes, I do walk away Don't because walk I know myself. So I walk away to calm myself down. And she will come follow me. And she will keep going to I say something back to her. And it's not going to stop until I say something back to her. You're right. Because if I ask you to go wash the dishes, I mean for you to go wash the dishes now. You Don't walk me. away from me and not say nothing to me. Mm -hmm. You can even say, uh, I say, uh, okay. Grandma, I ain't going to do it right now. I do it I wash the dishes. She making it seem like I don't wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. I wash the dishes. But she thinks, like, it, it feels like I'm the only child in the house that's doing something. Can you describe to me what it felt like when Cherie kicked you out, when your grandmother kicked you out? Um, I was real confused on like why you like why she kicked me out because like I said I didn't hit her I didn't touch her she hit me. <laughs> okay, well you told me I had to go so I had to go. What do you want? I'm done. I'm done. Don't go away and don't miss the emotional conclusion to this story. I had a problem with that. So if she threw with me, I'm through with her. She don't care about my feelings. It always turns into how she feel about how I feel. She don't never give me a damn chance to talk. That's why I slept out of her. Can you describe to me what it felt like when your grandmother kicked her out? I didn't hit her. I didn't touch her. She hit me. And <laughs> it was more so like, OK, well, you told me I had to go, so I had to go. Simple. What did that do for you? What did that do to you? Did no, that break you a little bit? the police told her she had to go. No, she well, what, did that, what did that do to you? Because you're, you're, a young, you're a young woman who's maturing and growing right now. And like, you're trying to figure out the world. And I see it, I understand. You're trying to figure out what to do, how to be better. And I know you have your grandmother's guidance, but these moments still affect you and stay with you. So how did that affect you knowing that like, I have to get out now? I mean, it's like, I'm leaving my brothers behind. It's like, you taking me away from them, pretty much, just because I you're mad. I can't classify her feelings. I mean, I be trying to do stuff with Zanaya. Mm -hmm. I really do. I even bought us coloring books. Yeah. To color. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Zanaya wants me to be on her time. Okay. I'm not on her time. She she got to come on my time, cause I got a whole lot of stuff to deal with. And when I don't do what she want me to do, there you go. Sheree, what she do you want to happen? Me down. What do you want to happen today? I I don't know what Zanaya need to do. Uh. But what do you want to I'm done. Today? You're done? I'm done. Because I, I actually don't believe that, because I know you're here today. I don't believe that. OK. I, I, I don't. Because the thing is, is that I know, I know the love in your heart. And also, I got to say, I, I'm going to just give you this. The same way you haven't had time to focus on the grief of yeah. losing your, time, your child, um, there's things that are still unprocessed in her mind. Uh, she also, on that same day the police came, she even told me, if she had the choice to keep my brothers and give me away, she would have did. So, well, so I know you, you know. Hell, I don't raise too many girls in my lifetime. I ain't want no more. I, I ain't want to deal with we'll that see, no we'll more. See, we'll see. We'll I see. didn't want to deal with I that get no it, more. I get it, but that language right there. I know. Yeah. I know. But can you, I know you know, 
But see, the thing is, is that even in our she exhaustion, we have to remember that our main intention was to protect. And your words are not protecting her in this moment. Would you be able to, and I'm going to get to her, so don't think I'm just staying on you. Okay. I'm going to get to her. Would you be able to at least apologize for this language that you're using to her and understand that a young girl, just like you, who lost mm. your daughter, she lost her mother, and hearing the one woman figure I have in my life tell me, I'm done, I don't want no more girls. These things, and I understand the context, right. it could be hurting her and could cause more damage in the long run. Could you at least apologize to her I, for that? I, I, I will apologize, and I have apologized to Zaniah. Zania boyfriend, mother. Yes. Now, I got a damn problem with that. Okay, okay. Because you, being my granddaughter, except this woman as your mama, grandmama, what the f ever, I had a problem with that. Got it. So if she threw with me, I'm through with her. Got it. I have apologized to her about that plenty of times. Yes, I got it. I don't have to deal with that. Here, thank you for sharing that. And I that. raised her. That, that makes more sense. This makes more sense. Thank you for sharing that because... What's I going raised on, her. There was the, the issues with your own daughter and her not being able to listen to you. There's a rejection that you experience. Yeah, right. She rejects me all the time. And so it's being mimicked, but vice versa. All the time. You're feeling that same rejection. When and she says she, it. I don't talk to his mama like that. She, she, she seemed know. like I'm just turning her away and going to her. I, I talk to her more one, than anything. One of, the big, one of the big lessons that you're going to learn as a young woman is the same way that I'm here to validate your feelings, mm -hmm. her feelings are valid too. But I think there's a big thing here that we have to remember, two big things. First of all, for you, you said that apology, would you be able to do it again for me right here so that, that way I can? Of course. Can you tell your of daughter? Of course. I love you. Brother? I love you and I really apologize. I apologize and love you. And we need to work on us. Yes. Just me and you. The second thing is, is that for you, there still is your grandmother. And so part of it is that there's things that as a young woman you'll never understand. And there's one, a third piece, I'm gonna get you, don't worry, but there's big things you have to understand. And with her, there's a level of respect that even though she's yes. become a maternal figure, she's still a grandmother, so there's that mm -hmm. extra level. And even though it's difficult for sometimes for you to manage that, I get it, because you're showing like, I'm good at school, I'm here. Yeah. You have to find the strength in yourself in those moments to be able to find a new way to communicate. So I know you know to some degree when you say something to her and you say no or you question her, you know what you're doing. Yes, you do. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yes, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I ain't and that I, smart. And I, and I, and I acknowledge <laughs> but it. But I can figure that. I, I, I acknowledge it. It's because you're mimicking her behavior. She, she said things, so you're going to show her. But there are levels that you have to be respectful. You have to be respectful. So can you commit to saying, I'm going to start, when she says, hey, I need you to do this, this is still your caretaker. She is still the one who is providing a home for you, clothes mm -hmm. for you, everything else. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to respect that. And mm -hmm. you going around and stuff with your boyfriend and doing things like that, it hurts her, so you have to make sure that you're not being disrespectful. Is that something you can commit to? Yes. Y'all can take yes. those steps. Mm -hmm. Of course. Trust. I'm willing to Better do communication everything. with the language and know that yes. I'm not going to reject you, you don't reject me. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah? Good, good. I give your grandma a hug. We're going to figure this out. It's all right. All right, friends, stay with us. We'll be right back with more. He's convinced his boyfriend is sleeping with his best friend. When it comes to your boyfriend and your best friend, it's two phones unlocked. 216,417 interactions, and they were all romantic in nature. Get off my stage! Now there's a laundry list of songs about love and betrayal, and my guest Colby says he could write the next big hit. Colby believes his boyfriend Dawson is sleeping with his female best friend. He wants my help unlocking Dawson's phone and revealing the truth of this love triangle. Everyone, please welcome Colby to the show. Hey, Colby, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, thank you, ma'am. Hug. Yes. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Okay, so what's making you suspect your boyfriend is hooking up with your best friend? Well, so they started hanging out a lot okay. more yes. without me. Um, 
and then they would go on lunch dates without me. Yeah. Um, I've seen messages, they say, I love you in there. Like, you don't, I mean, I would understand if it was me telling her mm -hmm. I love you, but you, absolutely not. Okay, then I guess I could see how that could be weird, but I, yeah, I understand. So how did they react when you confronted them? Um, actually, I never confronted them. That's why I'm here today on the oh, show well, okay. to grab him, to tell him. Got it. So how long have you and Dawson been together? We've been together for about a year and six months all together. A, a year and six months. Yes. Got it. And what has it been like in that year and six months? Um, at the beginning, it was truly amazing. We yeah. were always on trips. Um, we did a lot of stuff together. Oh, y'all look adorable. Yes, we like traveled a lot of the world together and it was just amazing. And mm. then it started to go downhill. Um, so we had a hurricane in Louisiana. We had our first apartment and then the hurricane took it. We started living together within four months after we were together, mm. and then the hurricane came, so we ended up having to move out because they kicked everybody out of our apartment complex and told us, like, hey, look, it's damaged. Four months together and started moving in together. Yes. How old are you? I'm 18. 18 years yeah. old, okay. But I got emancipated. Got it, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand that, but I, I was more so thinking about being so young and making the commitment to move right. in with somebody, right. you know? Okay, so I just wanna know, has he ever cheated on you before? Yes. He has cheated yeah. on you. What happened? Has it been physically? No, that, not that I know of, that I know of. Um, but like, I'll have mess, I'll go through his phone while he's sleeping and they'll have messages with other guys in there. He'll mm. send pictures to other guys. If you want to be with me, why are you doing that? So you're saying emotionally he's cheated and he's sexed? Right. You lived with his family too, did you? I did, correct. You did. What, what's going on with your parents is, um, are your parents, so, I know you were emancipated. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable talking about this? Absolutely. So okay. my mom passed away when I was 13. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad, when I came out at 16, he kind of just was like, no. He rejected it. He you. rejected it. And so like, it wasn't the healthiest relationship. So I got myself out of there. Emancipated right. from it. And so, so that gives another layer to why this, you know, because it's very easy to look at this and be like surface. Oh, we just want to lock the phones. But this is family. Right. Like when you lost yours, this man's family stepped in. Correct, like yeah. they took a place of my family and it's just so hard to lead them because literally they, it's like I'm a son to them. It's not like I'm Dawson's boyfriend, it's like I'm their son. Got it, you're nervous right now? A little bit, yes. Because I know when you're nervous you smile. Yes, yes a little you do. bit. Okay then, yeah. And so tell me about your relationship with your best friend, how is that? Um, that, that's my girl, like that was my girl. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we were always together before Dawson came in the picture. Like, that was who I went to for everything. If I had a problem, that's who I was calling. If, hey, look, you want to go do this on the weekend? That's who, that's who I was going with. Yeah, makes that, sense. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm here talking to Kobe, who thinks his boyfriend Dawson may be sleeping with his female best friend. And let's hear what Dawson's side of this story. Everyone, welcome Dawson to the show. <laughs> hey, Dawson. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. You too. Welcome to the show. So take a seat for me. So I gotta ask you point blank. Are you hooking up with his best female best friend? No, I am not hooking up with his female best friend. Yes, we are really close, but I've been trying to have this conversation with you for about four months now. Mm -hmm. And you always just no, neglect to it, you push me not. away. No, yeah, I didn't. That is what you no, do. No, no, because you always want to get there and argue about it. But and there's... then we never get a resolution. So we need to get a resolution here, and that's why we're here today, get a resolution. Do you all always argue when he tries to bring up this? Yes, normally he'll start, he'll get angry with me. He does not want to talk about the situation. Do you, do you get angry? Yes, I, absolutely, because that's my best friend. So, and then you, you don't want to, like, you barely want to talk about it. He says he want to talk about it, but we're here now he wants to talk so about it. So you're not really angry, you're hurt. I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm, I'm hurt, hurt and angry. angry. I am, I'm both. Okay, you're both. both. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever exchanged inappropriate messages with his best friend? No. Uh, Why did you hesitate? He's convinced his boyfriend is sleeping with his best friend. So you told my producers you almost had sex with his best friend. It's two phones unlocked. 216,417 interactions, and Please. they were all romantic in nature. What's making you suspect your boyfriend is hooking up with your best friend? They started hanging out a lot okay. more yes. without me. I've seen messages, they say, I love you in there. Has he ever cheated on you before? Yes. 
He has cheated yeah, on you. I'll go through his phone while he's sleeping, and they'll have messages with other guys in there. He'll send pictures to other guys. Have you ever exchanged inappropriate messages with his best friend? No. Uh, Why did you hesitate? Yeah, yeah you better hesitate. Not a hesitate. No, I did not. I just more of, but you get the I love you to my best friend. I mean, it's I, a best friend. She's there. She's there but, all the time. But that's not your best friend. You're telling her I love you. Dawson, how do you identify? I just want to be clear on this. Uh, I am gay, but it from so yeah, I could yeah. be bi. I, I would say, say I'm bi. bi. Yeah, I'll identify as bi. I mean, that's very in important to establish because you look at these two people in a couple and you're just like, oh, these two gay guys. This is never happening. Right. But if you identify as bi, then there's a possibility of this. Okay, Kobe, did you know that Dawson um, identified as bi? No, I thought he was 100% gay. Oh, so you never had that conversation? Right. We never, it was never brought up. Dawson, why did you bring that up to him? I feel, my, more of my standpoint, I rely a lot more on feelings. I personally feel it doesn't matter if a person's bi, gay, straight, or anything. If you truly love that person, you truly want to be with that person, then that, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it, nothing matters of a label. Okay, so you told my producers you almost had sex with his best friend. What did you mean by that? There was definitely a Colby, night. Colby, I saw your face. You didn't know that. <laughs> no, I okay. did not. There was definitely a night that we kind of got a little close, but it was always, it was never, it was never something that would have started because we just both recognized what was going on and it was kind of like, no, that's not, that's not at all what I want because mm -hmm. I do want to be a Kobe at the end of the day. Okay. So I was listening in on a call you had with my producers, and you said that physical cheating is not the same as emotional cheating. And I, I, this is the first thing I wanted to do when I met you was to ask you, what do you mean by that? I truly mean, you know, emotional cheating could sometimes be very thin in how you put it. Like, it's not all... Emotional cheating is really... You could just be talking to another person. So which do you think is worse, physical cheating or emotional cheating? I feel physical cheating is worse. Physical cheating is worse. Yeah. And his complaint is that he's heard you say, I love you to the best friend that he thinks you slept with. That I love you didn't mean, that's like a friend I love you. Mm-hmm. And okay. definitely, like, you could say that to a friend. You could say that to my cousins. I, I, you could say it to my cousins. But you don't tell that to my best friend. I would, I wouldn't you tell say that to your my, best friend. So do you admit that you cheated on him? Emotionally I, I, or physically? I'll definitely, emotionally, yes. And physically? No. Not I did not do nothing physically. Okay. So in your definition, you think you've actually done the worst thing to him? Or no, you think physical? No, I did the... Physical you think is worse? Yeah, physical is worse to me. Okay. Which do you think is worse, emotional or physical cheating? I think emotionally. I mean, I don't think you should be texting anyone during a relationship at all. You, you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't entertain someone else. You shouldn't even have the thought of entertaining someone else. I know y'all are younger, but I'm going to just go ahead and let y'all in right now. Unless boundaries have been set where you have established that one or the other is something that both parties agree on doing or participating in, both emotional and physical cheating are wrong if the other person does not know. <laughs> Equally. Yeah. Point blank. Exactly. Point blank. Just yeah. let y'all know. You're young. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this, unless a boundary's been set, but there's no boundary, then, uh, you know. All right, so Dawson, you have your suspicions about COVID cheating, you told my producers. Definitely, because there will be times... He'll, he wants more friends. Like, he'll want a friend to come over, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't live in the same house. We kind of had a, a point where we're giving each other space because that might... He wanted space. Well, space, because I heard y'all move right next door to each other. So well, you yeah. like an apartment 101, he in 102. Exactly. <laughs> <Space>. okay. Exactly. <laughs> y'all share a wall <laughs> still. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, you know... Um, he'll have a friend come over. And yes. he'll tell me before, just so, because I'm kind of crazy, but <laughs> yeah. um, he'll tell me. But then he'll also tell me, like, but don't text me at all. Don't call me. I'm going to be with my friend, he said. But he'll tell me, you know, they're sleeping on the couch and I'm sleeping in the room, but how do I know that? You told my producers that you think Kobe is sneaky, and after hearing that story exactly. about him being next door with, you know, people and saying they're going to sleep on the couch on the bed, it could be sneaky. Are you sneaky? <laughs> and when I need to be. You, so you are sneaky. When I need to be, exactly. Why, why do you feel like you need to be sneaky? I mean, Because I, you're over here complaining that he is over here doing things behind your back. Why do you need to be sneaky? He, I mean, I, I don't got to sneak anything to him. I'll be straight up with him about, you know, 
what what's going on in there when we had this space. But yeah. obviously, I'm here for a reason because I want to be with him and I want to work things out. Got it. I understand. Dawson, do you see a future together? Definitely. You I do, do see so. If we can work past what we've been getting going through, okay. I can definitely see something there. Well, everyone, I'm here with Colby and his boyfriend, Dawson, who wants me to unlock each other's phone to find out if either of them have been cheating in their relationship. I know we all want the answer, so I think I'm ready to unlock both of y'all phones. Y'all ready? When it comes to your boyfriend and your best friend, it's two phones unlocked. 216,417 interactions, and they were all romantic in nature. So you told my producers you almost had sex with his best friend. What did you mean by that? He'll have a friend come over, but then he'll also tell me like, but don't text me at all, don't call me. They're sleeping on the couch and I'm sleeping in the room, but how do I know that? Yeah, are you sneaky? <laughs> when I need to be. Well, I think I'm ready to unlock both of y'all phones. Y'all ready? Yeah. Colby, what do you think we will find um, when we unlock Dawson's phone? Oh, um, I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm kind of nervous mm -hmm. to, for you to tell me. Okay, yeah. Is there anything that we'll find? Possibly. Possibly. I'll definitely say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, when it came to Dawson's phone, we checked apps, we checked photos, I checked texts, I checked phone numbers and calls and just overall the message on the phone. When it came to apps, Dawson, you have matched and communicated with 130 people on one dating app in the last 40 days. <laughs> when it came to photos, you received and saved 11 sexually explicit photos. Thank you so much. And um, the reason this one was interesting and why we brought this one to attention is because this photo was sent and it was sent on Christmas because in the photo, you see, he sent this photo and used the icon Merry Christmas wow. to send it to someone else. Really? Really? So over Christmas time. Christmas, the day this, of Christmas. This is and a new we were photo together. that you sent and then we put were together, Merry Christmas on it. And people. this is what yeah. you're doing. We're, we were together on this day and you sent So you sent a picture. new photo during yep. Christmas I'll to someone else. Wow. Okay, well we're not done yet. When it comes to text messages, there were actually no text messages found between Dawson and your best friend. But when we checked the rest of the phone, there were 235 interactions between Dawson and your best friend on Snapchat that I couldn't find because it was deleted. Wow. So it, it was a mixture but of photos did, and messages. But you did, I told you, I knew I caught you deleting stuff. You were doing a lot more than what you're saying. But honestly, I'm doing all these things recently because I'm getting fed up of you treating me how you treat me. You had a conversation with me recently that you would sleep with someone else. And I was like, kind of just, okay, well, I need to move on then if you're gonna do it. Oh, but you said that? Did you say that? I did. Was it trying to be spiteful or did you mean it's it? Very spiteful. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I want, like, I despise you in some point because of what you did. And let's so talk about. What about the photo though? Because you said that on Christmas and that's like specific. To send a nude to somebody and then hashtag it Merry Christmas with the, you know, yeah. thing is a, pretty, is, is a pretty clear sign of like, I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Do you want to explain that to him? Honestly, that day, I'm pretty sure, if I can remember, we did get in a huge argument. So that's why you did yeah. it? Yeah. You sent it, because we got in an argument. Is that what you're going to do every time we're in an argument? Honestly, that would be truly like, that would spite you. Why you, would it spite, why? Because you treat me like I am nobody. You could talk to anybody, you talk to these people, and I feel like I have to look better, I feel like I have to be nicer this way. You'll not want to talk to me sometimes, so I feel like, what's my problem? So Dawson, because I don't want you to fall fully on the sword, because we still don't know what's in his phone. So what do you think that we'll find in Kobe's phone? Do you think anything at all? He's told you right now that he's, you've told me right now that he's made threats to you that he's gonna go sleep with somebody else. I definitely else. think there's something. You think there's something in his yeah. phone? Kobe, is there anything you think we're gonna find in this phone? Mm. 
We're just minutes away from unlocking this man's phone. 216,417 interactions with the same man, and they were all romantic in nature. And everyone's true feelings, that means you're playing with people's emotions, are about to come out. This is where we gotta get real. Dawson, you have matched and communicated with 130 people on one dating app. You received and saved 11 sexually explicit photos. There were 235 interactions between Dawson and your best friend that I couldn't find because it was deleted. You were doing a lot more than what you're saying. So Dawson, because I don't want you to fall fully on the sword because we still don't know what's in his phone. Kobe, is there anything you think we're gonna find in this phone? Mm, not really. Not really? Okay. Not anything like that. Okay, understand. <laughs> okay, well listen. Um, we went through your phone, Kobe, and we unlocked apps, photos, and we went through your phone in general as well. Kobe, when it came to your phone on apps, you as well have matched and communicated with 170 people on one dating app over the past three years. One of those years, you two were together, so there was that. Now, when it came to photos, Kobe, you saved only one explicit photo from someone else. Now, the biggest thing that was a big eye-opener for me is, Kobe, in the past 52 days, you had 216,417 interactions with the same man, all romantic in nature. Exactly. Exactly what I thought. But... So do you want to talk about that? Yes, absolutely. 216,000. Do you see that number right there? <laughs> 260. Exactly. And they were all romantic in nature. I specifically told you who that was, and you, you could tell me who that was. So did he tell you that he was talking to somebody else? He told me he was talking with someone else, but he never told me that, that's the said friend. Yeah. That is the oh, said friend. Oh, that's the friend that's yes. sleep, sleeping that on the couch? The friend. Yep. Is he really sleeping on the couch? Yeah. Have you had sex around the course with the other person? Remember, I just went through your phone. We talked about it, but I have, like, never, like, I've never been able to do it because I was stuck on him. Still in love with him. Right. I'm still in love with Dawson. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I could have these conversations, but they didn't mean anything to me at all. Mm. That's a lot of energy to put in someone else. 216 to say that it doesn't mean anything else. This other guy you were talking to, his emotions are fully involved in you. He is fully attached. And you know that. So right. it's kind of hard for you now to say, well, I'm doing it in spite because that means you're playing with people's emotions. Right. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. not okay. Right. I got to tell you, the truth of this matter is, is that you two are young, sweet men who are trying to figure yourselves out and should be having the freedom to explore the world. Right. You should be having the freedom to do what you need to do to find out who you are, to sleep with who you want to, without these boundaries and expectations that neither of you actually want to hold up to. Because you over here texting and sexing photos and doing stuff, you over here in a whole full over of relationship. You a full on relationship. Okay, I was reading these messages like, this ain't just boyfriend? And so, both, neither of y'all want to be in this right now. I think what has happened is because unfortunately, and this is where we got to get real, right. because of the trauma that you experienced and because of the rejection you experienced, this is the person who said, I see you and I accept you. And so you're holding on to that because you're afraid at such a young age of more people rejecting you or more of losing more people. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I do feel that. I feel that. But yeah. I, I do love him. I know you love him. So I think the first thing we need to do is establish, like, even if you're not in a relationship, is he family for you? Yeah. Will you yeah. always be there for him? Always, yeah. Let anything, him know. anything that you need, and you know this, I'll have you back through anything. You're gonna to have to start to figure out how to trust that. And it's gonna take time. But I promise you, at this young age, if you can start to practice trusting that people won't leave me and people won't reject me. And I understand what you've been through, so it's gonna be difficult. Right. But the more you can practice that, is the more you're not going to get into relationships that are unhealthy and stay in them just because you don't want them to leave. Right. He's not gonna leave, this is family. He's gonna be there for you. I'm gonna tell y'all something, the beauty of sort of, um, LGBT relationships is that we don't have the same definitions or, def you know, the same, we don't process the same sometimes as straight relationships. Yeah. Right. My first boyfriend is still to this day my best friend. 
We call, we talk. He's, he's like a brother to me now. You don't have to fear that you're going to lose him. Right. But what I will tell you is that fear is bringing up a very negative side of you where you're then saying the things to him that are hurtful. And sometimes people who have been rejected, they start to test people to see if they're going to, I can push them away and say things to see if they're going to stay. And right. that's a personality flaw. And you've got to fix that now at 18. Can you apologize, Sam? I'm sorry, Dawson. And you know, I love you a lot. I, I will be the first to admit I'll tell you stuff. And it, I don't mean it. And it's out of, like, a lot of stuff. But the way it comes off to you, it probably does seem like I mean it. And I'm very sorry. And I don't, like, I'll work on everything. Can you receive that? Yes. Yeah. And can y'all break up? <laughs> Officially. <laughs> go, go ahead and do it here. That's going to be a happy ending mm -hmm. for me. Oh, love you, love you. But it gotta end. You gotta end. Amen. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so, no. Listen, on this show, sometimes we'd be like, hug to stay together. But sometimes, <laughs> hugging and going apart is gonna be the healthiest for y'all. Yeah. Now right. that y'all broken up, y'all are next door neighbors, y'all are friends. <laughs> okay. I love y'all. Y'all gonna be okay together. All right. Everyone, thank you for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all.